Audrey gets thrown into the hostile world of Aang created by Joy Drew who is now dead. With this world left unchecked, ruled by the hostile Aang demon and a new character known as Wilson who wants to fight the demon and bring order to this world, or so he says. Audrey, not having any family, seemingly growing up an orphan, trying to find a way out back to the real world, learns about herself and her origin, shocked to learn who she truly is. Hi folks, I'm R and welcome to Bendy and the Dark Revival, which answers a lot of the mysteries that were raised in the first game. If you have any theories or game suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that said, let's dive in. The game starts on Audrey narrating while we get a tour of a rundown house which the first game, Bendy and the Ink Machine, ended in, with an old Joy Drew tormenting Henry Stein, explaining how he's trapped him in a loop stuck in the Ink world. This is of course because Henry was his partner in creating the studio who left him because of his family, which broke Joy and drove him into insanity, especially as his studio was starting to fail and him becoming bankrupt. Audrey explains how the past will hunt a specific person for the things that they've done when the scene cuts to June 18th, 1973, with a young Audrey hand-drawing Bendy with 800 more sketches left to animate frames of what seems to be a scene in Bendy's cartoon. This is roughly about 10 years after the events of Bendy and the Ink Machine took place when Henry entered the Ink world or Bendy's domain, but it of course seems as if Henry has been stuck in a time loop for a long time, with time's passage working differently when in the Ink world. Looking around in her office, a very familiar painting is found which was seen in Joy Drew's house which was signed by Henry. This to me seems to give a hint that Audrey is actually the child heard at the end of Bendy and the Ink Machine that referred to Joey as uncle, who is now grown up and employed as an animator who seemingly doesn't remember Joey at all. Tell me another one, Uncle Joey. Leaving her office to fetch a cup of coffee to keep her engines of course running for a long night of hundreds of sketches to come, Audrey opens her door which has a logo of Archgate Pictures which was founded by Nathan Arch, a longtime friend of Joy Drew. We learned through a tape that Joey, being on the verge of bankruptcy, made a plea asking Nathan for money to fund the organization which might indicate that Nathan Arch partnered with Joey or straight up bought the rights to Bendy, hence why they are animating Bendy cartoons or movies. As Audrey walks through the dimly lit, stereotypically horror-esque corridors, she reaches the elevator which gets stopped by the janitor called Wilson who has a very strange and creepy mannerism and choice of words, coupled with a creepy voice which might be due to his voice box issues or even lung problems, as he takes long breaks in between each sentence. Tonight, a pretty girl like you shouldn't be wandering around all by yourself. Mind if I step in? Uh, of course not. Thank you. Audrey. While in the elevator, Wilson continues on his relentless parade of weirdness, calling Audrey whatever synonym of beautiful he could remember from dictionary. Just beautiful. Gorgeous. That's when the elevator suddenly stops as if the power went off, with Wilson reassuring Audrey that it's just a short. When he opens the doors, with the floor being a memorial to Joy Drew, the founder of Joy Drew Studios, the creator of Bendy and the company, who went too deep, trying to expand the company, slowly losing his mind, wanting to bring the cartoon characters to life, experimenting on humans and creating the ink world where he trapped Henry alongside other employees. A plan commemorating Joey reads how he passed away in 1971, just two years ago in the current timeline, reading out how Henry was in fact just as responsible for creating Bendy, being given credit for where it's due. Going through the exhibit, following Wilson who claimed that he could fake the elevator, turning some switches on. They reach the notorious ink machine which seems to transfer human consciences into the ink world, with Wilson instructing Audrey to find specific items to place on each pedestal so he could turn the switches. At this point, instead of realizing something is clearly off, Audrey just does that, which was exactly what Henry did back in Bendy and the Ink Machine to turn the machine on, which is a ritual for transferring the person's conscience who placed the items on the pedestals into the ink world. 
Audrey just doing that without any question whatsoever, even turning a lever on a pipe which clearly has nothing to do with the elevator. The ink machine starts running, pouring so much ink out with Wilson holding her down, saying how they're both going to die now, asking her not to forget to look for him in the ink world so he can show her her purpose and the truth, as she surely will forget after being reborn as an ink character. This depicts how Henry must have transferred into the ink world alongside the other characters and especially the lost ones, who all were put into the ink world just like that, dying in the real world and being reborn as new characters in the ink world. But something that still remains a mystery is if Henry died in the real world, how did he interact with Joey in his house in the real world? Unless Joey specifically designed a section in the ink world which mimicked reality for Henry to keep reaching the end, being reminded and tormented by Joey, what is happening just for him to forget again and repeat the loop. You will forget everything. Let go! Come find me, Audrey. Come find me and I'll show you your purpose. I'll show you the truth. Oh no! No! Audrey soon awakens in the ink world with posters of Wilson hung everywhere, being regarded as the man who killed the ink demon and someone who knows everyone's purpose. Seemingly looking like someone who had a crappy life in the real world and willingly transferred into the ink world to manipulate everyone and live a better life, creating some sort of a meaning for himself. Audrey confused to what's happened to her, having ink oozing out of her, she finds a note by someone simply referred to as your best pal, which was found on the painting in her office with Henry signing it and referring to himself as her best pal, which might be just a coincidence with Henry having written this note for Audrey. Coming across another note, it reads how the bank is reclaiming many goodies from the company, of course, as they were going bankrupt and failing to pay the bills. As Audrey walks a little, she hears a command from Wilson on the speakers that he wants the citizens of the ink world, referring to them as the children of the machine, to bring a young lady to him, a stranger which seems to be Audrey. It's unclear why he wants her though, sounding so evil and sinister, especially as he seemed kind of genuine before he killed Audrey. But hey, I mean he was very deceptive to lure Audrey into the ink machine and he killed her, so he isn't very trustworthy. As Audrey explores this new world, she comes across the heavenly toys section where she encounters Alice, who informs her that she's lucky to be turned into a fully formed character rather than something like a searcher. Inky blood-like creatures barely having a shape which could mean everyone within this world, good or evil, shapeless, conscious or instinctual, all have once been humans who turned into these characters. Alice also instructs Audrey to keep going up as that's going to be the safest place without much more explanation. Soon, Alice disappears after warning Audrey about about the ink demon when she explores the studio further, finding a gent pipe. Using the pipe to protect herself, she somehow acquires a power of the ink, letting her banish ink creatures to the dark puddles. This portrays how Audrey somehow connects to the ink world, harnessing its powers, managing to control them and use them for her own benefit. Soon after, Audrey comes across a friendly small bendy who is put inside a gated room, acting like a child playing with a toy train. Audrey, being too familiar with bendy, tries to reassure him that he'll be fine, but she mistakenly zaps him with her newly acquired ink power, which she cannot fully control, which scares away the friendly bendy. In search of bendy and trying to go up, Audrey hears the roars of the ink demon, who menacingly informs her how the ink speaks to him and tells him about each and every character. While she gets a glimpse of the demon before managing to escape him. This reveals how Wilson didn't manage to kill the ink demon at all, it could be just a lie he elaborately boasted about to manipulate the residents of the ink world. After some time, Audrey comes across a guarded door by a lost one who was once an employee in the Archgate pictures, who desperately wanted people to see his paintings and realize his potential. However, in fear of others stealing them, he had them, not showing them to anyone. Audrey has to find these paintings so this lost one can open the gate for her who ultimately tries to attack Audrey, but instead falls to the stinging taste of the gent pipe. 
Passing the animation alley, Audrey finds a lost one called Porter who's stuck in a pipe asking her for help, seemingly being friendly. After getting him out, or in better words, passing him through, unclogging the pipe, Audrey jumps through the pipe, which seems to be the way forward. As a token of appreciation for unclogging him, Porter gifts Audrey a new power which allows her to teleport short distances, or you could also say, air dashes. This power, of course, comes in very handy, especially in the gameplay mechanics. Managing to reach close to the elevators, a gate shuts, forcing Audrey to go to the artist's rest section, which seems to be a sleeping area for the artists or animators to rest in while having long shifts or nights instead of going back home, providing them with pods to sleep in. As reported by someone called Hank Scott, the place instead of being somewhere for the artists to rest in, many turned it into a gambling place where they would party in different ways, making it anything but a quiet resting place. Encountering the ink demon throughout the entire place and evading and fighting several hostile lost ones who are manipulated by Wilson to bring Audrey to him, the word soon gets out that Wilson in fact is lying and the ink demon is still out there. Wilson, hearing about this, reports on the speakers how these are nothing but mere rumors, as he killed him, with him being the ink world's residence protector. Coming across a note, Audrey reads that the ink creatures in fact don't die, they simply return to the ink to be reborn, making it an endless cycle of torment. However, in some occasions, the diseased and trapped souls within this world do not get reborn, being trapped in between worlds who become the phantoms or the ink ghosts, drifting in the shadows and hunting this world, a fate worse than the endless cycle of death and being reborn. As Audrey manages to get into an elevator heading to the surface, she starts to slowly unwind and become more optimistic. That's when a voice is heard coming from the elevator speakers from someone known as the Keeper, who ejects Audrey as he reports it to be an unauthorized use. Unauthorized surface elevator in use. Manual lift ejection activated. Audrey, beaten and starting to give up on hope, falls into a basement floor where it's filled with ink eggs, producing creatures straight out of the Alien movie. After battling these monstrous entities and winning, Audrey comes across a representation of Joey Drew at his peak, who goes on his motivational speech that there's something special in everyone, especially Audrey. This is while Joey is dead in real life after living up to the age of 70, which depicts how this place is stuck in time and space. Joey confirms this place runs in parallel to the real world where monsters were created, a nightmare world which was founded whether on revenge or regret a riddle that is for Joey to solve. This Joey is of course a younger, more optimistic version, who had his life ahead of him, not the old, bitter Joey on the verge of bankruptcy, seeing all of his efforts gone to dust. Joey then explains that he's not actually real, he's just a memory, a representation of Joey at his best, which leads to his shrine where he only started with a pencil and a dream, building an empire which of course eventually crumbled. Audrey soon goes down to the pipe and drainage system them where the Gent Corp connected to the studio where the ink inhabitants there believe in their lord, King Amok, a king who rules down here and sends any mutineers and rebels to the lower level to suffer more. To this group of lost ones, they believe whoever manages to destroy their lord Amok, they would claim the new role of a ruler, which is exactly what happens with Audrey killing Amok and becoming the new ruler of this little section these lost ones call a kingdom. Managing to reach a high level, Audrey in shock observes an entire city as far as the horizon reaches, a city known to be built on broken dreams. That's when Audrey notices Bendy right next to her, also observing the view, when she amends her relationship with him vowing to protect him, planning to go to the gent building. As Audrey tries to find an ID card to progress, the memory representation of Joey appears, showing her a memory, which she lives through watching a reel. There was a bitter old man who had lost just about everything. Joey. Right. The real Joey Drew. He blamed everyone but himself for his mistakes but mostly he blamed his old business partner for abandoning their work years and years ago. A man by the name of Henry Stein, great artist and a good friend. In his anger, Joey used an evil machine to create another world. A world made of paper and ink. 
where he'd torment his own version of Henry forevermore. But one day, a miracle happened. An angel came into Joe's life, a young woman by the name of Allison Pendle. She didn't visit often, but when she did, she saw something good in Joey no one else could, including himself. Through their friendship, he began to see the world with better eyes. So one day, in Joey's cartoon cycle of hatred, he gave Henry an angel of his own to guide him when things were most dark, to always provide hope. It was then Joey decided to make something new, something he had always wanted but he could never have, a family, but not a cartoon one, something real. And after many, many tries, he created something that made him happier than he ever could have imagined. A wonderful, loving daughter. Bright and kind, almost human. He created you, Audrey. What? Are you crazy? Listen, I know it's a lot to believe. Who do you think you are? I wasn't born from some machine. I'm flesh and, and blood. I'm not some kind of ink monster. Just because we're born of darkness doesn't mean we belong to it. We're always free to choose, to believe what we want to believe. Take me back, right now. I'm not listening to any more of your lies. Remember who you are, Audrey. Leave me alone. <sighs> this, of course, shows that Audrey, in fact, was born from the machine, someone who was almost human, living in the real world, which depicts how the ink machine was more than just a pocket dimension, where a world of ink and paper existed. It even could create humans. What's a little convoluted at this point, however, is why Audrey didn't recognize Joey when she saw him first, as it seems Audrey spent majority of her childhood with Joey. This in a way reinforces my theory that the child we heard at the end of Bendy and the Ink Machine is no one else but Audrey. Maybe due to being born from the Ink Machine or being manipulated by it, Joey could wipe Audrey's memories the same way he did with Henry in the cycle. Joey. Not able to handle the truth that she's not human, with this information being too much, Audrey leaves this memory and goes to the Gent building, which has been claimed by the Keepers, making it their domain. Entities who want to keep the order and the cycle, preventing anyone from trying to escape the Ink world. That's where she observes in confusion the Ink demon appearing, before being manipulated by electromagnetic fields to be transformed into the friendly Bendy. Not understanding what's going on, she gets confronted by the keepers who explain how they've been created by Wilson to keep the order and that Audrey is dangerous and erratic, not wanting to have any sort of agreement with her. Bypassing this section and entering a prison section where the keepers lock up creatures known as cycle breakers, Audrey comes across Henry from the first game who has been locked up for years without eating or having any human needs, who eventually realizes that he's not a human anymore. Henry explains cycle breakers, creatures who reset the cycle or try to escape it, end up being locked up here for eternity. Henry of course reset the entire cycle of the ink world by showing the ink demon a real, which made the entire ink world with all of its creatures resetting as if starting from the very beginning, and why Henry forgot everything and restarted his journey from the top. There's something I need to show you. All right, Joey, I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. Henry instructs Audrey to get the reel labeled as the end and show it to the Yank Demon, which would reset the cycle. He encourages her to do just that, so maybe, just maybe, they could escape this nightmare. Turns out the Ink Demon himself is the key. 
This world is his, but even he must obey its rules. For now, at least. If you can get him to look at something very specific, he will reset everything. What is it? It's just a reel of film, labeled with the words, The End. As Audrey tries to access the section to get the reel, a keeper emerges out of the ground, capturing Audrey, which makes her pass out. She awakens on a moving train accompanied by Wilson, who goes on a stereotypically evil monologue, making little to no sense, of course being mysterious and sidetracking from Audrey's questions to why he did this to her. Instead, he explains they can bring anything to the real world from the ink world, and that he wants Audrey's help to save his father's life, which could point out that Wilson somehow knew of the unnatural birth of Audrey and how she came to the real world from the ink world. He thinks with her help or powers, he could also create his father in the ink world and bring him to the real world. But first, he wants to bring order to this world and make it safe before he releases anything into the real world. As Audrey follows Wilson, Audrey gets telepathic messages from the ink demon who pleads with her that Wilson is lying and not to believe him. As if now the ink demon is the more reasonable one and not the hostile entity who was chasing after Audrey not long ago. <laughs> Soon Wilson takes Audrey to his quarters or retreat, which is a designated section of a building which is safe and secure with no one able to take any weapons in, with signal towers stopping anyone from using their ink powers. Wilson then confesses that he never destroyed the ink demon, all he ever did was to find a way and transform him into a harmless form. The friendly Bendy Audrey befriended, but even then, as ink demon is too powerful, he found a way to free himself from the prison of being transformed into to a smaller form. Wilson then introduces Audrey to his housekeeper called Betty, who shows her to her room. After a short walk, Betty explains how she's one of Wilson's many failed experiments to create the perfect housekeeper, someone whom he wanted to be in the shape of his mother, which confirms how he wants to create his father and mother and bring them back to the real world. After performing some sort of a ritual, the twisted Alice Angel appears and kidnaps her, the embodiment of Susie Campbell who voiced Alice Angel character but was soon replaced by Alison Pendle, hence why she became vengeful and assumed the role of a villain in the ink world. As Audrey awakens, she finds herself on a long table, restrained alongside some other lost ones, with Twisted Alice playing some sort of a pretend dinner party. Twisted Alice explains how she wants to take Audrey's skin to be beautiful, and she has been deformed, forcing her to play a puzzle for freedom. Despite managing to solve the puzzle, Twisted Alice unsurprisingly breaks her promise and uses her icon iconic tummy gun to kill Audrey. As Audrey sneaks behind her to banish her to the dark puddles, Twisted Angel reacts quickly and throws her down, but just before she's able to kill her, Alice Angel appears from behind and kills her, saying that it feels familiar, not remembering the very first time she actually killed her in the same exact manner when Henry was the protagonist. Why does this feel so familiar? That's when Boris' character joins the group too, who goes by the name Tom, being labeled as the wolf who protects Alice. Audrey, instead of calling Alice, refers to her as Alison, being her actual name in the real world, which Alice likes and accepts. This plus a time she kills Twisted Alice, not remembering the first time she did before the cycle was reset, depicts how majority of characters within the ink world don't remember their lives before, as Alice doesn't even remember her real name, being Alice. Audrey, realizing that Twisted Angel always wanted to be beautiful and that she felt like she was robbed from her beauty in the world, became vengeful and vowed to do anything in her power to regain her beauty, that event being killing others. This unhappiness only led to more pain and sorrow, making her a villain that she didn't want to be. You have my face. It's our face. Always were. Uh. Uh. 
Audrey then heads back to Wilson's retreat, getting instructed by Betty to go down to his lab, where he's been waiting for her. Reaching Wilson, that's when Wilson reveals that he's been working hard to find a way to dethrone Ink Demon, which made him create an alternate entity more powerful to replace him for good. But for that, he needs to sacrifice the soul of Audrey, hence why he forced her into this world to transfer her soul into this new entity to take over the Ink Demon. Wilson then confesses that he lied about wanting to make everything right and save his father. In fact, Wilson is the ignored and vindictive son of Nathan Arch, who lived under his shadow, wanting to instead rule in the Ink World. The Ink Demon will fall, and we can have peace at last. It could work, but it sounds risky. How will we control him? We don't want to repeat Joey's mistake. The right soul. Last your purpose is revealed, Audrey. This is why you're here. With your soul inside him, my creation will live forever. As Wilson tries to throw Audrey into the machine to transform her into the new creation, Audrey fights him off, throwing Wilson himself, which transforms him into the new godly entity. After a challenging battle, managing to weaken this new entity, Audrey falls to her back, but just before she's perished and defeated, the Ink Demon emerges and saves her, killing this new entity who was weakened thanks to Audrey. The Ink Demon then approaches her, having a closure, revealing her true purpose, being a demon just like himself, being born in this world by Joey Drew. Audrey and the Ink Demon fuse together, becoming one when Audrey reawakens as the Ink Demon. Confused to what's happening, the good memory of Joey appears, giving Audrey positivity that she's not evil, a creation that brought him joy, someone who can define her own destiny despite her past or what she's meant to be. That's when Joey presents the end reel before the Ink Demon kills him. There's always a choice. I know you're in there. Deep behind that evil face. Inside somewhere is my little girl. My Audrey. My greatest creation. I'm scared. I, I don't know what's happening. The past doesn't define you. Nor the present. In the end, all those years ago, Joey Drew finally succeeded. He created life. But Audrey, you're so much more than that. You were his family. His daughter. My daughter. And I love you so very much. It's never too late. Just a pencil and a dream. It's not enough! You have to have... heart. No! The future is sealed. I'm starting over. Audrey, being heavily broken by the scene, resists the powers of the Ink Demon, playing the end real, making the entire Ink world reset once more. That's when the scene cuts to Joey's apartment, with the camera panning around this rundown apartment, with the door to the Ink world opening, but this time being Audrey's office. This is the same exact door that opened, resetting the cycle, sending Henry back to the Ink world. She explains how now she rules this world, making the Ink world more bearable for her 
friends and the creatures inside, making it actually peaceful, with many entities now being able to break into the real world, with a scene showing a colorful Bendy next to Audrey, which depicts that Audrey can freely move in and out of this world now, as she's made of ink but living in flesh. Despite not being shown or directly suggested, this explains that even Henry can now come back to the real world, as he once did in the first game, about 10 years ago, but as Joey controlled the ink world, he sent him back. If Henry ever gets back to the real world, he's gonna be a reborn, inky version of himself and not the real human he once was, as his real body was destroyed. Audrey, for some reason, forgot that she's the daughter of Joey, maybe because she was made out of ink and Joey could control it, or maybe Joey fully hid the truth from her. Hence why she referred to Joey as uncle and not father in the ending of the first game. Therefore, Audrey being made of ink and being so powerful, she could control the ink demon who ruled the ink world, hence why she could be the new ruler, making it a much better place with the possibility of many of the characters coming to the real world, something Joey wanted for a very long time. My father's cartoon world was now mine. To rule, to watch over, and to protect. I can make the cycle more bearable for my friends inside. But as for me, I'm the first of my kind. Born of ink, but living in flesh. Joey's world is escaping into ours. So, what's next? Who can really say? And that's it for this video folks, make sure to stay tuned as I'm planning to make many more videos about Bendy and the Dark Revival. Thank you folks for being here, it's been your host Dar, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care.